The page storage key is used to preserve the scroll position in list views, grid views or any other scrollable widget. By default the scrolling position is not preserved which means if you scroll in a list view and then you change the tab of your bottom navigation bar and at a later point you come back to this previous page then the scroll position is not preserved. And therefore we want to make use of the page storage key with which we can then preserve the scroll position and we will look here at three examples, a list view, a grid view and an expansion tile. In all of them we want to preserve the scroll position. We will also look at the end at another example where we keep the scrolling position even if we pop our page from the navigation stack. And then if we navigate back to this page the scrolling position is restored. If you are new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's get started by preserving the scrolling state of a list view and therefore I have created here a bottom navigation bar with two tabs and here we have basically the same list view inside. And therefore I have here simply created a list view which is then displayed here in our UI and it simply displays here 40 items. Let's now try this list view out, therefore I simply scroll here a bit. Then I change my bottom navigation bar item and I go back to this page and you see that the scrolling position was not preserved. Before we preserve our list view scrolling position we want to look at what happens internally. So by default if you create a new page, a new route then also a page storage is created for you. And inside of this page storage you can then store a key value map. And here you can for example define your individual key and to this key you can then store a value and here we want to store our list scrolling state. If you have then later within your homepage another list view, grid view or any other scrollable widget then you need to create for this one another key and here you store then for example the value of another list scrolling view inside. And it is important to notice that if you store your scroll position in this key value storage then this is only for this page and each other page has its own page storage. And this means if you later go away from this home page and you pop it from the navigation stack then also the page storage is deleted and all the scrolling states which you have put inside of your key value storage are also deleted. And this was the theory about the page storage in a nutshell. And you need to keep in mind that all the things which we store here inside is only for this individual page. At a later point we will also look at how we can store this page storage at a global level so that even if we navigate here back to another page and come back to this page that we have still the scrolling position state. So let's go back to our example and here within this list view we want to preserve the scrolling state. And this is pretty easy, you simply add here a key and here you need to add a page storage key. And inside of it you set then the key, the identifier of your key value map. And this key needs to be unique and like I showed you before it is then here stored as a key within your key value map where we later store then our scrolling position too. And this is all what we need to do, so the remaining part is done by Flutter. We only need to supply here the key. And the value with the scrolling position is handled by the list view automatically for us, so we don't need to care about it. And now we can try our example again out, so I simply scroll here a bit in the list and then I change here the tab and go back to this list view and you see he is always preserving exactly the scrolling position which we had before here inside. Let's also do the same thing with a grid view and therefore I simply scroll here a bit then I change the tab and come back to this page and you see it is not preserved. And to preserve our grid view scroll position we simply put here again a page storage key inside and then you put here your key inside. And because I'm here within a new page I could also put here the page 2 inside which we have used before for our list view. However now we are here within a new page and this has then also its individual page storage. And therefore we don't need to care about the other page which was holding our list view because it has here its own page storage and also its own page storage key value map. Let's also look at another example. Here we have some expansion tiles within a list view. And now if I change here the tab and go back you see that first of all the expansion tile are closed. 
and also the scrolling position is not preserved. And therefore I simply go here to the expansion tile and this is exactly what I have created in another tutorial. So if you want to learn more about the expansion tile then I will link the video in the description of this video here. In this video about the expansion tile we used here exactly the same source code and here inside of the expansion tile you need to supply first of all also a key and here you set then a page storage key. And then I set here for example this time it dependable on the title. And this means that we store for example for the country's text this expansion tile if it is open or not. And also for the dates which is here also our title we store also if it is expanded or not. One important thing to notice here about our page storage key is that first of all this here needs to be an identifier so it needs to be unique. And secondly, it also should never change. This means that for example, if you have here the countries as your title inside, then you should never change this countries. Because if you later change here this name, then also our key value map is not working anymore. Because if you change every time this value, then we cannot get here the list scrolling state back. And therefore it is really important that you make sure that this value is never changing. So the best thing is when you put there an ID inside of your object or some constant value which you define for example like this. All right, now let's try our example here out. So we have within our expansion tile this page storage key and I can also open here things up like you can see. And then we can change our tab and go back. And here you see that he has still all things opened. However, he has not preserved our scroll position. And this is also what we need to preserve. And therefore I simply go here back to the page and our expansion tiles are here wrapped inside of a list view. And therefore to also preserve the state or the scrolling position of your list view, you also need to put here inside a key. And here inside you put then a unique identifier inside. And now we can here open again our expansion tiles like before and if we have then here the scrolling position this should be also kept if we change our tab. So let's see. And then I go here back and you see it has kept the scrolling position which we had before inside. So in total if you work with expansion tiles then make sure that the list view which is holding your expansion tiles is having a page storage key. And also the expansion tiles should also have a page storage key for each tile. Our example so far worked pretty good in preserving the scrolling state. However if you then go back from this page and then you go back to this page again you see that the scrolling position is not preserved. And this is what we want to change. To store our scroll position even if we change our routes, therefore we also need to create our own page storage. So by default every page, every route has its own page storage. However under it we also can create our own page storage and if we create it then under our page then it is used instead of this page storage. And this is already the whole trick about making our scroll position global. So here we have already a local scroll position so it is always saved if we change for example the bottom navigation bar tab or the tab bar tab. And now to store our scroll position permanently within our app we simply wrap here around our list view within our body property here this page storage inside. So we create our own page storage. And therefore you also need to create a bucket and this bucket needs to be global and therefore I simply create it here right now outside of this widget. So make sure that you are not putting it inside of the state because if this page is later destroyed then also our bucket is destroyed. And we want to have instead a global bucket which is not destroyed. And with this we can try our example right now out. So I simply change here the scroll position. Then I navigate back and I come back to this page and you see that he has kept exactly the same scrolling position. And lastly as a small hint you also can put this page storage directly around your scaffold. This is also working fine because the route was created before this. So you can put it here directly within your build method inside and everything should work fine. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye!